Let me do the same. <laughs> there we go. Make sure the audio. What's good, YouTube? It's Sunday conversation. I got some awesome people on live today. Miss Erica. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Who was that? Is that me? There we go. All right, cool. I got Mrs. Erica Cooper, Antonio McCarver. What up, though? And the one and only Kevin Charles all the way in the UK. What's good? Right, none. What's going on, everybody? Nice to be nice to be here again, tuned in with you guys. We've got Eric on as well, a new a new edition. You know? no, What's going no. on? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's Sunday. I figured we all get together and share our experiences, sell our wealth of knowledge, and help as many as people as possible. So um, shout out to all the moderators. If you all could catch those interesting questions, questions and repost them to me, and then that way I can answer those questions, and we can kind of not miss anybody that tuned in on the live stream. So. With no further ado, let's talk about information technology and where it stands today and where you think someone new to IT should focus. Who wants mm. to start it out? Mm. Mm. I mean, that's that's a that's a big question. You know? <laughs> I know, that's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so broad too. I like what you did there, sir. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. each one of you are from different domains. Um, right. Erica is from a CCIE data center. Um, Antonio, CCIE voice, and Kelvin, soon to be CCIE security. So I figured we could all cover, you know, a, a specific area and go from there. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, sounds good to me. Sounds, sounds good. good. So I suppose, I don't know, let, let, let's kick it off then. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be biased because I'm in the security domain and, you know, that's where it's at. I mean, right now, security... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you look at technology in, in the industry today, technology, you know, security is embedded within everything now. Um, a couple of years ago, um, Cisco, you know, said that we are going to start to embed everything, uh, security in everything that we, um, everything that we do. Um, not only our products, but our, um, our ways of working. We're going to train our staff um, to be security aware. Um, so I believe, you know, security is really big and moving forward, I can't really see it slowing down. Um, I think what we, we also need to focus on um, is, is for those that are looking to get into the industry, you know, maybe if you haven't really got a sense of direction, you know, it's, it's, it's a good idea to explore. Um, I still recommend starting off rooting and switching because it is a foundation, um, but, you know, start looking at cloud, cloud technologies. Um, I'll say again, automation, orchestration, and things there, you know, the, the huge. Um, but yeah, the, for me, I'd say, you know, security, whatever you look at, look at security because security is really important. You know, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more, especially being a collaboration guy. Uh, it's, it's interesting, I got a project on Friday where I was like, no, 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 this needs to go over to the uh, security people uh, but actually it needs to stay between the two of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Some things need to happen with ice. Some things need to happen on the voice. So what does that matter? Like Kelvin said, security isn't going anywhere because every company is going to want uh, to ensure that they are being very secure, very um, tucked away from outside villains. Uh, however, he all, Kelvin was also right in saying that Rotten Switch is a foundation. So my philosophy would be get your foundational knowledge up. Uh, you can't go wrong with either one of the domains that we all represent. You're going to always need have a need for communication between uh, person to person. That's just always going to be what it is. There's always going to be a phone or video device of some sort. You're going to always need to secure that network. You're going to always need to make sure that uh, the underlying infrastructure of that network is up and good and not just at a layer one, but layer three. And you're going to also need people like Erica to make sure that we do the best uh, 
that we can with our data centers, whether you know that's hosted in the cloud or whatever the case may be. So I said all that to say, get your foundation up and then just do something that you think that you would like. What do you have to lose? That's true. You know, that's a great point that uh, both you and, and Kelvin actually made, because one of the things that I see now is I when I started out, I was actually a route switch candidate, but I'm starting to see the market kind of shift a little bit. You still, like you said, you still need a, your route switch engineers. You still need your um, your traditional voice and even your uh, more converged collaboration um, uh, engineers available because you're still going to need that within the enterprise. But what I am seeing right now is a market shift as far as uh, things within the enterprise now going to like what Kelvin was talking about with the cloud automation, SD, uh, SDN, which is software defined networking, uh, as well as anything related to having uh, resources accessible right now, like a DevOps, de uh, development operations model, DevOps, agile type of model. Uh, so I would definitely get uh, like what uh, my colleagues were saying as far as like the foundation, whether it's routing and switching or foundations within data center or even security, but uh, definitely try to ex you know expand on it from a more specific, granular, detailed uh, discipline, like uh, whether it's voice or you know collaboration or security or in my case data center. Regardless of whatever technologies that you use or you know try to use within your enterprise, you still at some point will need security to make sure your enterprise is properly your boundaries are, are properly maintained and controlled as well as the enterprise infrastructure. Because one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to hand the keys to the kingdom to, if you're a networking team, you want to hand the keys to the kingdom to the server team and they use up all the resources, all the bandwidth, everything. So there has, everything kind of melds together, but um, you're not going to put one in place over the other. So definitely get your foundation together and, I've always, you know, always in, in, encourage everyone to look at security. So, definitely, and yeah, I think just to touch on Eric, you raised some really good points there. And I think one of the things that stood out for me was DevOps. You know, you mentioned DevOps, and DevOps is is really big, as you're probably aware um, today. Um, if we if we look at things like SD access, um, you know, we we start to see all the technologies come together. So, you know, me working in the security domain, yourself in data center and Antonio in, in the uh, collaboration space. You know, we start to see where technologies or solutions such as SD access, you know, they, they, they come together where we need to be able to work together to, you know, provide a full, full solution, you know, not just from a security aspect or a collaboration aspect. It, we all need to come together and do that. And I've, I've also noticed today that especially with some of the technologies that I'm working with at the moment. Uh, you know, we only have to mention Cisco Ice, for example. There's so many moving parts to, you know, just this one product alone. Um, you know, you almost need to understand different domains anyway. You know, so for instance, Ice can be integrated with LDAP or Active Directory. So you need to understand not so much into depth of what Active Directory is or how it functions at a lower level, but you still need to understand how this works, how we integrate it, and what is, you know, so LDAP bindings, you know, stuff like that. We need to know all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, you start getting into the, the, the nitty gritty stuff of, you know, certificates, you know, again, that's, that's security, you know, that. But security and certificates, certificates are on nearly everything that we use today so you know from a data center perspective from a collaboration you know phones use certificates if they're using uh, e etls um so you know stuff like that so we almost come together now in, in you know with, within this devops kind of environment to provide a whole solution so we, we almost need to know a little bit of everything these days i, I couldn't agree with that more you touched on something that's actually really big these days or well, not these days it's always been big but even more so now uh being able to know how to integrate things because we all have to uh plan each other's domains and there's always some type of integration that's going to take place whether that's whether that's going to be with uh like kelvin was saying microsoft servers which uh clearly you can do it from a security standpoint i know in the uh collaboration world I need to make sure that when we're doing things like single sign-on and 
all of that good stuff. I'm touching certificates that's coming from a most likely a Microsoft uh, certificate authority. I'm going to do integrations for all my users with Active Directory. Um, you know, so there's so much of the integration piece as well. Again, you know, learn some basics and some foundations and then just decide what you want to do that's, that you think is going to be fun. You're going to be valuable no matter what domain you're in. You're going to be valuable. You know, get to it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, I agree. Um, Kevin mentioned Cisco ICE. The thing about Cisco ICE, it, like you said, it, it integrates Active Directory. You got to understand wireless and you know, 2.1x, which is Cisco Prime, so, something along that line. Phones with NDM. There's a lot of moving parts in the Cisco ICE. And so, what you all mentioned the security for me, I would say having a foundation in security is a great place to start. Um, a lot of people say A plus, should I start there, the CCNA? With security, you know, um, maybe the security plus is a great certification that can get you in the door, whether it be DOD or oh, yeah. um, a basic entry level job that'll give you a foundation on what to do, what not to do, and how to operate in, in infrastructure technology environment. Yeah, that's a great point, Dewan, because in the federal sector, which I work in the government sector, that is one of the core uh, certifications. It's not the Cisco CCNA security, uh, the security plus, and then it's more vendor neutral. Um, you look at your security plus, and then I think the other one is the uh, CISSP mm -hmm. uh, or the uh, SSCP, which is I think like the mid-level, more of the um, hands-on engineering. And then I think the CISSP is more management. But in the government sector, um, not the private sector, but the government sector, that's the one of the core uh, certifications that that uh, they look at before they even look at a uh, anything vendor related, whether it's Juniper, Cisco, Palo Alto, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, you know, if you want to get into it, but it depends upon what sector you want to kind of look at. Do you want to look at the private sector? Well, then you may want to look at more, uh, you know, well known, reputable certs, you know, from different vendors like Juniper, Cisco. Uh, it doesn't matter, but more in the government sector, you kind of have to understand what their core uh, core requirements are, which in this case would be vendor neutral. Right, right, right. Thanks, Eric, and thanks, Kelvin, and thanks, Antonio. So we talked about the foundation and where you start, and I think the synopsis was pretty much security. We all kind of agreed on that. <laughs> now, once you get that foundation and you get in the door, you get your first IT job. Um, me and Tony kind of had a conversation. He he asked me this on Friday night, and he said, "Should you focus on getting a certification in the job you actually do, or actually what you want to do once you get your first, second, mid-level job, wherever you're at in your career? Should you focus on what you actually are doing, or what you actually want to do when it comes to certification and advancing?" I think that's dependent upon. Uh, the environment that you're in, um, some some places may require you to uh, start your certification journey out focusing on what you do. Right. Uh, other places may be open to, you know, you choosing whatever path you want. So I think that's an individual, a individual situation thing as well as the individual life thing. I've always approached uh, studying different topics. Like I kind of would if I had high interest debt or just debt in general, I would try to knock out, you know, what was of high interest first and work my way down. So how, how did you handle it throughout your career? So throughout my career, uh, I've had to be a jack of all trades and a master of none until I got to Cisco. Well, actually, until I got to a partner uh, working in a knock first and second level, I had to know everything from Juniper to Palo Alto to uh cisco of course aruba like everything uh every vendor as well as different technologies but once um once i was given the option of what i wanted to do to advance i started out saying um i want to do security but my manager at the time had uh misheard me and thought that i said voice uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that, that's the joke that we make. But, you know, when I said I'm doing security, he said, oh, great, you're going to do voice. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do security. He's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. You're going to do voice. And then finally, he says, well, you know, I'm the one that knows the work that we're getting. 
you can do security or you can do voice where we're getting more of the new work. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's like you know what you say that that's a very elegant way of saying you you didn't hear what I was saying earlier. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it was brilliant, you know. Let make everybody think they have a choice in the matter. And you know, once I woke up, I was like, yeah, you know, I do want to do voice <laughs> <laughs> because you had no choice. <laughs> right. But even now, so I've had the choice to do: am I going to pursue security or data center next? And honestly, man, it just it was really a a coin toss and i was like you know what i know people that are going to be going after uh, security we can work together we can motivate each other f it i'll do security plus it's not going anywhere it's either security or data center and where's security going nowhere so why not yeah definitely i think from from my point of view is that you know when i first started out and i i got my degree um and you know actually entered the the it industry as we know it um, I, I was fortunate enough to start off as a network security engineer for a partner. Um, now, they want a really big Cisco partner. Um, so I found myself having to, although, I mean, I must stress, in fact, when I actually joined this company, um, there was no requirement for me to get any certifications off the bat. You know, there was never any mention of certifications. It was more of a personal preference in that I wanted to pursue these certifications and I were already on track for my CCNA route and switching so I decided to continue with that. Um, but when I actually got to the company, um, I found that we did very minimal Cisco um, stuff, Cisco work and you know doing a degree for three years solely based on Cisco products and Cisco you know just configuring Cisco devices you know for me it were a bit of an eye-opener because now that I've got to um, deal with with real customers and you know working on everything apart from Cisco so for me it was a bit of a, an eye-opener and I actually nearly transitioned to doing a checkpoint because the company I was working for there was a big checkpoint partner um, and working as a security engineer I was working with Checkpoint, uh, Fortinet, uh, Palo Alto uh, technologies like that but Checkpoint was a big one so I started to focus on um, checkpoint firewalls um, even some of my videos on my YouTube channel actually they're, they're related to checkpoint and um, it wasn't that I didn't like the technologies but because I'd spent three years doing a degree on Cisco I wanted to stick with Cisco for me it didn't make sense to actually try and you know as Antonio mentioned you know a jack of all trades and master of none you know I wanted to specialize in, in Cisco technologies so for me, it was a little bit difficult because although they didn't require me to do any certifications, I wanted to do certifications and I wanted to do Cisco certifications, but the Cisco certifications and the knowledge that I was gaining wasn't really going to get used at the company I was working at. So the only option I had was to either move to another company, another partner that you know heavily relied on uh, Cisco engineers, or to, to, to follow my dream, which I never thought I'd get so soon, which was to, to work for Cisco. Um, and fortunately enough, I actually got the opportunity to work for Cisco. Um, now, being at Cisco, um, I, I think every, from what I've heard internally, every manager is different. Some managers, they will push you to get your certifications. Um, some of our customers require that we have certain certifications to work for them. Um, but my manager, he hasn't really said, right, I want you to get your CCIE security within the next year. You know, that's something that I'm trying to achieve because I want to achieve that. However, me getting that certification makes, um, makes it a lot better for me um, as an engineer and uh, within the team. Um, because there's, there's monetary benefits to it. There's also, you know, personal benefits to it as well. Um, and, you know, speaking indirectly to my manager a couple of weeks ago, and he said, you know, keep on studying the CCI security because, you know, it'll, it'll definitely benefit you down the line and it'll put you in a, in a better position. So, you know, indirectly, it does want me to get it, but there's no real push from management for me to actually pursue that. Um, you know, with a deadline. So that's for me is good because it, it kind of removes that stress of having somebody else looking over my shoulder and expecting me to get that within a certain timeline. Right, right. 
I definitely, real quick, I definitely believe, uh, you know, to echo what Kelton said, it depends on the environment that you're in. When I first got to Cisco, uh, I was, I've always been in advanced services as a network uh, consultant engineer. And in what they call big AS, that's where the customers are kind of getting the, the better of the better engineers uh, to specifically focus on a technology or a customer. So it was an expectation to get uh, certified on that side of the house. Um, but I've been places where it was really, they, the company could not care any less whether you did it or not. So, you know, you really need to evaluate your environment or the one that you want to go to. Yeah, I would actually, it was my, 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 my career was a little bit different because with the certifications, when I first started out, the certifications were such like new. So it was like, oh, you know, you've got your, or you're going for your CCNA. And at that time, if you could actually get that CCA, CCNA or CCMP or CCIE, then it was kind of like, it, it was a big deal within the companies I've worked for. Now, if I, when I worked for a partner, that was a huge deal because partners, you know, the more certifications that they have or more, uh, certified individuals that they have within their organization, that's better for, you know, you know, for them to get uh, different projects or, you know, different opportunities. So, but to just, if you're just starting out, you could get the certification and then maybe try to move into a different part of the company or the organization. If you're starting out on the knock and you get your CCNA, you could probably go in and try to talk to your manager and say, well, you know, I've got my CCNA, I've got I've been studying up on my uh, routing and switching or whatever your uh, discipline is that you got in your certification in, and maybe ask to do some shadowing opportunities with the senior level group member. So that could be an option too. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a requirement to get your uh, certification, but you can definitely try to create opportunities like, you know, talk to your manager, talk to your tech lead, team lead and say, hey, you know, I could probably, can I just, you know, sit in on one of their installs and just see, you know, kind of like a, you know, uh, kind of like be, a, um, you know, just kind of see what they're doing during the install. That's another way that you can kind of move around within the organization. So, Okay. So if you see something that you're interested in and you decide, okay, this is what I want to do, like let's say Cisco Ice, but in your organization, they don't want to give you that opportunity. How should you go about taking that opportunity because that's what you're going to have to do what are your thoughts on that uh let me i'll just jump in there um because i've, I've actually done this myself so um i actually so like i said before when i was working for the partner and it was mainly checkpoint i had to find a way to learn checkpoint firewalls quite quickly and uh, considering that i'd never worked with them before and i was dealing with customers um that you know was calling in and opening tickets with checkpoint issues so the only way I could do that was to actually, um, within the, the within the company account, was to actually sign in and get um, the images for the checkpoint devices, and then install them on my home computer and start to learn that way. Um, so I guess it's the same with Cisco or mainly other any other technology that you can get your hands on the iOS uh, or VMware images today. You know, if you if you've got, say, for instance, you're working with a partner and you're interested in learning, say, a little bit more of ICE, you know, you, you've seen some engineers working on it, but, you know, you've not had the opportunity because, you know, you're not that senior yet. What you could do is with within the, you know, ask permission um, to start with, but um, or if you've got your own account, account um, then by all means, log in and download um Cisco Ice, the VMware version, and you can spin it up on your home computer and start to mess about with it there. You know, there's full uh, Cisco offer on Cisco Docs. We've got full administration guides available online. Um, so it's not like you need an account to be able to access privileged information. We publish all that uh, or most of that content online to the public so you can see that. And a lot of our technologies, especially the VM versions, um, actually come with evaluation licenses. So once you activate the evaluation license, you might get 90 days or so. What you can do is you can um, generate a snapshot of the device, uh, of the uh, build that you've done, run it for 90 days, learn as much as you need to learn, 
tear it down, do it again, you know, another evaluation for 90 days, and just keep going. Yeah, that's a great point. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree, bro. <laughs> that's right. Anybody else want to chime in on this before we go to the next question? Oh, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to get to a couple questions in the chat real quick before we keep going. So Ricardo Pierce asks, um, he said he just saw it, so he's not sure if it's been discussed, but what is everyone's opinions on the Cisco Security Cyber Ops certification? If you don't know anything about it. I haven't looked into it. Uh, my thoughts yeah. on any certification is uh, if they have it, there's a need for it somewhere. Why not? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, Again, I've not looked at it myself. Well, I did look at it when they first released it. Um, I tried to get onto the, before I worked for Cisco, I tried to get onto the scholarship program that we were offering um, to get on, to get the cyber ops certification. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get onto it, so I'm a little bit annoyed then, but you know, I work for Cisco, so I don't care now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, what I'd say is certifications are personal. Um, dependent on your role, dependent on your interests. You know, there's a lot you need to look into before asking other people what you think about a certification. What I would do is I would go to cisco.com and um, I would I would search the actual certification itself. I would look at the blueprint and the blueprint topics. And if you work for a company, uh, let's say for so the cyber ops is more to do with uh, knock engineers. Um, so maybe sat sat in a knock environment. So what I'd do is I'd look at the blueprint and I'd I'd, I'd look through that blueprint and I'd, I'd I'd check off each one. I'd say, okay, how many of these actually relate to what I'm doing? How many of these are going to be beneficial for me? How many of these are of interest to me? You know, personally. And once I've done that, I would then evaluate and say, well, is this certification worth it for me? Is it worth my time? And if not, then and you and you're not passionate about it, or you don't feel as though you're going to be passionate about it, then leave it alone. It's as simple as that. Don't just chase a certification because somebody else is chasing a certification. You know, I've got guys that work within the security team that are chasing the CCIE routing and switching, and they work in security. You know, it's personal preference. The, the, hey, that's a great point, Kelvin, about. Mm -hmm chasing the certification because someone else is chasing the certification. Um, the thing about my my channel is what I try to do is talk about not just the CCNA, but other certifications because there's a million ways to the top. And what you should definitely do is make an informed decision on what certification is going to have the most impact on your career. What, what are your thoughts? I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, I, I think that's a good assessment. It, it, like you said, it's personal. But uh, you just you really have to do an assessment because if you're going to do a certification, you look you need to look at your personal life as well as, you know, how are you going to accomplish that cert? Uh, and then, you know, get a plan together. You know, like if you if you're going to go after, like, let's say, the uh, CISSP or let's, the CCIE collaboration, you just can't just go up there and just say, OK, well, I'm going to study for the CCNA voice. CCMP, you have to kind of get your plan together and then figure out, you know, what equipment you need. It's, it's, it's really a personal decision if you're going to go after that certification. It, it's, you know, it's more than one way to get to the top, like what Duan was saying. So it's a personal, personal endeavor, definitely. Back. Yeah, yeah and, and thanks, Erica. Another thing along with that is it's nothing wrong with going through some training without taking the certification. That's true especially if the, the training aligns with where you want to go and what you want to do. You can save the stress of taking the certification and just go through and learn the information. That's I my so thoughts. True. I agree wholeheartedly. That's so true. And, you know, one thing <coughs> I want to point out, which I do see a lot on social media these days, is that, that, you know, people seem to be in a race to get certifications. You know, it's not a race. You know, take your time, learn the content, and make sure you understand the content and then go and take the exam. And you know, you need to realize that if you're not actually using uh, the, the knowledge that you're learning, you're gonna lose it. There's been so many times that, you know, even throughout my journey that 
you know, CCNA routing and switching or CCMP routing and switching or whatever certification I've done, you're not going to be using all that content. So what I say is if you don't use it, you use it. And it doesn't matter who you are, who you work for. It's as simple as that. That's true. That is very true. Because if you don't use it, you're definitely going to lose it. But uh, like what Dwan was saying, if you actually sit down and take, let's say, a ICE class, you know, uh, to further your knowledge, that's, you know, and you don't necessarily have to go and get a certification or complete an exam. You can just be, you know, get that, uh, soak in that information and be able to help out within the, you know, different projects or different opportunities within the organization. So there's nothing wrong with that. It, it, the certification is personal, personal endeavor. That's definite. Definitely. Tony, what's your thoughts, man? Uh, you know, I, I already agree, bro. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a personal thing. Um, and, and you got to look at everything that goes into a personal decision. Your why. Um, is it money related? Is it family related? You know, whatever. It's all going to be personal. The key is do not have analysis paralysis. <laughs> Don't sit around, keep asking, you know, well, should I do this? Should I do that? You know, is it too late? Uh, I didn't start here. Don't worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. It's an open game for everybody to get in. Choose a lane, just like you would if you was driving your car on the highway. You got to choose a lane, put your put your signal on, and merge. You know, and, and I really feel like if we start to focus on that, you guys are going to start to see a whole lot of success quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, one thing that I will say is that if you decide to go to pursue a degree or pursue a certification, make sure that everybody that's on your team is one positive, will encourage you, and then make sure you've got that support because it's you know if you go down the task of going to, like I know Antonio when you went to with your uh, collaboration CCIE your support team had to be there. So if, you know, if it's those days that if you don't feel like studying or if you feel like, oh, this isn't, you know, what am I doing? You need somebody that's going to be there to hundred percent, you know, kind of, you know, give you that, that support the way that you needed to. Uh, okay. So that's, that's key. I mean, you, if you're going to go down that path, then definitely get your support team there. To oh, excuse me. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, even outside of work, outside of colleagues, you know, getting that support from, you know, whether it be your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your boyfriend, you know, that's that's also important because, you know, there's going to come times, especially when you get up to, you know, not even just the IE level, if we're talking about Cisco certification, but, we, we, you know, you get to the professional levels you're going to start to feel drained. You know, there's a lot of information to take in. Some of these certifications require more than one exam just to get certified. You know, the CCMP ruling and switching is three certifications. The CCMP secure is four certifications, uh, four exams, sorry, before you get certified. So it's a lot of work, you know. So sometimes if you're already working in the field as well, sometimes the last thing you want to do is when you finish work is to start studying, you know, because you've had enough of it. You just want to get away from the technology and spend time with your family. So you also need that encouragement from uh, your peers as well, from you, from your family as well, to kind of give you that extra little bit of motivation to carry on and make you understand and remember why you're actually doing this. Man, hey, that's a great point. And that's a, I kind of want to pivot right here, which what you're talking about. Let's talk about procrastination. Hmm. Cool. Have you all ever faced that in your career? Because I know a lot of people in the chat and that follow us look at look at us as these successful people that's really getting it <laughs> IT. But let's keep it on it. We all get uh, to when we're burnt out and let, let me start. Yeah, okay, let me ahead. start. Yeah, <laughs> let me start with that one. So I faced procrastination uh, when I was doing my CCIE serve because when I had didn't pass my routing and switching, um, you know, I was just like, uh, I don't feel like doing this. You know, this is like just too much. And so I set a goal and that goal passed, you know, and then I was like, OK, it was my husband that kind of gave me that swift kick in my behind. Like, look, you know, we set this goal. You let it pass. What are we doing? So, yeah. That procrastination, you know, sometimes all people look at is the glamour of, oh, you've got your degree, you've got your certs, 
Now, you don't see all the other stuff of the preparation, the sometimes procrastination, uh, and then having your support team or, you know, a very disciplined, like, I've got to get it together now uh, mindset. And then it's like, okay, let me get back on track. That That is, I think that's everybody goes through that. I think it's how you respond to that procrastination. If you're kind of like not focused inside, you know, and saying, okay, I, you know, I've got to get my search done and I, I set this goal. I've got to, you know, be, you know, aggr- or not aggressive, but just, you know, to, uh, assertive to get this com- uh, completed. You'll kind of, you know, everything will come at you. Life will come at you. Uh, responsibilities, work, anything will kind of come at you to kind of get you off the path. So it's just a matter of just staying focused with what you've got. Now, you know, it's not, it's okay to take a break. The, the the trick is not take a break and it lasts for the next 10 years, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's about, you know, getting back on that, on that path and uh, whether it's a degree certification and, and everything else. So yeah, it, it's, I, I've experienced that. And luckily my husband was there to like, look, you got to get this, get it together like now. Right. <laughs> so well, no, you guys are hundred percent correct. Before you start this journey, build your support team. Um, you, you, you got to have somebody, multiple people even to help you, uh, when you hit that wall, everyone's going to hit it because like Erica just said, there's life that there's life that happens. You have work and family and everything. None of that stops because you want to get certified. Uh, the moment I actually said, I'm going to go down the path of CCIE. My manager put me on a project that had me working 50 to 60 hours a week. I was losing a lot personally uh, at that particular time, and I still needed to study. Thankfully, my support team were all pursuing their CCIE as well. And even after they passed, they didn't just leave me. You know, they still checked in instead of daily, weekly, like, yo, Tone, what are you doing? But when I hit my original wall of like, ah, I failed this attempt. I don't know if I want to get back on the horse. That lasted for probably from May until August. So, you know, and I, and I let that much time pass and I had to, it felt like I had to start all over because everything that I learned, the muscle memory that I created, it all went out the window and I had to start from scratch again. But it was my support system that actually said, hey, what are you doing? You're just going to fail and quit? Like, no, we don't rock like that. Right. Right. Well, let's just them them gems there. You two just got some gems, man. Boy, let's just pause it. Wow. No, but I, think, I mean, yeah, I've been, I've been for a few certifications now, and you know, like Antonio and Eric have already said, everybody gets to that point. You know, everybody hits that wall, whether you think you're gonna or whether you, or whether you think you're not gonna. Um, it doesn't matter how passionate you are, um, you'll, you'll hit that wall. I mean, my I actually scheduled the second, so I took my first attempt to my CCIE in January of this year. I actually scheduled a second attempt uh, mid-year, and I didn't sit that exam because I was flying around the world, uh, working crazy hours a week, um, and I had no time to study. I mean you know one of my longest flights was 17 hours uh, and then you know I was straight into work the next day you know so it's it's difficult life gets you work gets you you know family gets you it, it all comes at you and then when you're trying to then come back retract and try take time to study you realize that you just can't do it and you do need a break because you will burn yourself out whether mm-hmm. you think you will or whether you think you won't you know there's been times where so when i failed my cci security first written attempt in january um I, I i was busy working so it didn't hit me that hard but then when i actually had a little bit more time to actually study some more for this exam it was like oh, now i've got to go through all the content again I forgot this, I forgot that. And because I'm going through all my my one note or you know, all the notes that I've written or content that I've already looked at, it's boring. You know, I've done it once already and now I've got to do it again because I failed the exam. And now right. I've got to go through it again. 
And then I find myself getting, I don't know, messages on my phone or someone popping up on Twitter, on YouTube, or I see a new technology and I get sidetracked. Or I just start, you know, I'll sit there and 30 minutes later, I realize that I've just wasted that time being absolutely nothing but browsing the internet, you know? And it's just one of those things, you need to know how to manage that. And there is, there's actually something that I posted um, on my Twitter page a few weeks ago, and that was um, studying for, starting to study for 30 minutes to an hour, and then taking a 10 minute break, doing whatever you want, and then back into it for another 30 minutes and breaking it up. And there's actually a model um, around this, there's research based around this. I think it's called the Feynman technique, if I remember correctly. Um, so there is there is ways to actually manage this. You know, Antonio and Eric mentioned, you know, support teams. They've got that. For me, I like to personally, you know, focus on myself and use techniques that are available uh, through, you know, scientific research to actually try to you know, rub out the procrastination. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You just need to know to to handle that. Yeah, y'all all made great points, e each of you, and I thank y'all for sharing your experience and the times that you experienced it. For me, like a lot of people know that we can all virtualize technology. Yep. Uh, the reason why I have hardware in a physical lab is because I can disconnect from the internet. And the reason why yep. I like books is because I don't have to get on the internet to watch any <laughs> training videos. <laughs> I can limit any distractions as possible. Come right. in my lab and this is my moment of solitude to focus on whatever I want to accomplish. Now, now, the problem I have about my lab is running into um, configuration issues, um, just the stuff that you actually face in the job when you're actually installing some new technology. That's the problem I have with my lab. It doesn't seem to really happen when I use something like GNS3 or something like that. But in my lab, I have problems with hardware all the time. Well, you know, and that's a good thing because when you get out into the real world, Guess what you're gonna deal with a lot? Hardware. Yeah. You know, Hardware. layer one issues. Everybody forgets layer one and goes straight to layer two and layer three. And it's yeah. like, you know, hey man, we gotta we gotta clear that foundation. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I was doing some um we call it NRFU testing, so network ready for use testing. And yeah. um, I'd actually been to the data center to deploy some equipment and then the, the, the equipment got moved to another data center. And when I was doing the NRFU testing remotely, I realized that uh, one of the FPs was uh, missing from one of the interfaces. Um, but me being me, I didn't jump straight in at layer one because I'd already been on site even though it got moved and I thought, okay, you know, everything is all the game back how it should be. Um, so I jumped straight into layer three, looking at layer three stuff, looking at the other issues. And then, you know, I looked at the, you know, as simple as looking at the, the GUI and um, I found out that the, it just said, you know, SFP not inserted. So I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh yeah, but you can you can chalk that up to just being tired and being on site for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true, you know. But it, it happens, you know. It really does happen. There's there's many different ways of troubleshooting. As you, I think you're learning in your CCNA route and switching and stuff. Anyway, you know, top down, bottom up, uh, divide and conquer. You know, stuff like that. There's a, there's many ways of troubleshooting. Um, and when you're actually working with custom equipment or on site or you're under pressure and you need to get things done quick. Um, you don't necessarily use them. You use what's best for you. You use what you, you know, you're experienced in doing um, to, to find out the issues. And that's just how it is. Facts. Hey, shout out to Michael Hilton. Um, 15 years old, just passed his CCMP switch exam. It's crazy. Shout out to you, bro. Good achievement. Yeah. That's a congrats. Congratulations. So so he and shout out to everyone in the chat. So Michael Hill has a question and Tony, you probably can answer this best. He right. said, what are your thoughts on the future of collaboration? My thoughts on the future of collaboration are my thoughts on the future of technology. It's always going to be a need for it and it may change. It may evolve. It may go from on premise to off premise. It may go from hardware to software. 
it's still going to be the same. We're all going to have to continue to communicate. If uh, if voice and collaboration is something that interests you, it's going to be here. It's, it's, as, hu as, as long as humans will exist, we will need to <clears throat> collaborate and communicate. So, you know, go for it. I think collaboration is getting bigger. Um, yeah. You know, you only have to look at the amount of companies that are starting to allow their employees to work from home or to work from anywhere in the world. And, you know, you need to think that all those employees are actually utilizing some sort of collaboration software or technology to be able to do that. But I think collaboration is, is really big and it's, it's only getting bigger. And real quick, uh, before you jump in, Erica, to that point, Kelvin, uh, just where I'm at within Cisco, the collaboration domain is a parallel domain to the security domain. Mm -hmm. So we're actually two pillars of the same domain. So for as much as there's going to always be a need for some type of communication form, like you said, that you know, whether it's hardware, software, uh, we're going to need security as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, those things go hand in hand with each other. And I'm and, sorry, Erica, go ahead. And around switch, my bad. And around switch, bro, you forget. What's up? Well, I mean, right, you know, right. Never forget that. That's that is the basis. You know, you can even if you look at uh, Cisco over the past twenty five years, uh, going from having CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, route switch, where it wasn't even called route switch; it was just called CCNA, CCNP, CCIE. Right. Right. That has always been the foundation. You know, and then you can branch out. To yeah, that's other, true. Other that's pillars. true. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started, I started out as a uh, traditional voice engineer doing the uh, Class 5 uh, ESS uh, switch software translations on the uh, Class 5 e-switch. Um, from when I first started up until now, voice has taken over so many different, I mean, different type of uh, uh, flavors. I mean, you've got voice over IP, you've got collaboration and now you've got this unified communication the contact center so i think it's going to expound even even more but again like you said you always are going to need security whether it's physical security network security or even you know uh any type of security uh for just you know on premise you know for uh for that for that particular data center so i think it's going to expound so I, I i see i don't see it going anywhere i will say this much in the voice environment, and Antonio, correct me if I'm wrong, but more of the, here within the United States, we have so many different telephony features, uh, whereas versus what you have where Kelvin is at. Is that correct? Because Kelvin, you don't see the the customers like what you would see on you know um, you know getting all these like call forwarding, call this, all these th different type of telephony features international as you would here in the United States. So. Well, that, that, that's kind of, uh, well, that's accurate, uh, very accurate. But what I've also seen, though, is that although we may be more feature rich here in North America, uh, they are, especially over in Europe, doing a lot of cooler things, uh, like, for instance, with E911 over there. Here in the United States, we're just going to make a phone call or maybe a text. But there, I mean, you know, I was uh, reading an article where over in uh, – in Italy, they are with their E911 able to broadcast video from their cell phone of what's going wow. on. That's now crazy. think about how big that would be <laughs> in, wow. in the United States when we have an active shooter on campus. Yeah. yeah. Being able to to send just way more rich media than a phone call or a text here. Mm -hmm. uh, so they may not be doing a lot of feature stuff within corporations there because they they really do work differently over there. Right. <laughs> yeah. We, we, that's not a bad thing. I, I, I wish we could adopt some of that. You know, when they go on break, they break. Yes. You know, it's <laughs> much break for an hour and a half. Not, you know, really will. <laughs> they, they, yeah, 30 they minutes and you get back to your shift. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We, we go on break and we, we, you don't see it for the rest of the day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys take it serious. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm take siesta real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, one of the things I found about, you know, I lived in Europe for six years and I was from like 2000 two to i don't know 2007 or something or 2001 to 2007 and one of the things i found about europe at that time is they were already using cell phones tech messages 
Mm -hmm. um, they were so far advanced in that area, but in America, we're more um, networking and marketing. Like that's what we dominate in and mm. getting the product out to people. But in, in Europe, it seems that they take technology a different approach than we do. Right, that's Kevin, true. That, 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 that's, that's true. I that's mean, true. I was in, so when I was in New Jersey, New York um, earlier on this year, um, I realized that Cisco actually do quite a lot of advertising on, on, on the television um, and, and stuff over there. And over here, especially in the UK, we don't ever, ever see any Cisco advertisements anywhere. Wow. You know, wow. so, and I was quite surprised um, because, you know, some of that I've always thought about, um, but then I thought, okay, Cisco maybe don't really need to actively advertise. But then when I seen advertisements over over in over there in the US and you know it got me thinking, well why why does they do it in the UK? And I think you're right, you know, maybe we take um, an approach to technology slightly different to the way you guys do it. Um, you know, maybe because Cisco is an American based company, maybe most of the stuff kind of spouts from the US and then you know, people catch on in the UK, the European market, and then you know we just focus on the focus on the technology aspect of it. That's a good point. Very good point. Cool. Hey, I got an I got another question. Hey, I'm gonna get to that. Oh, hey, thanks, Dorian Smith, for the super chat. We're gonna have to do a giveaway or something at the end of this video. We'll think of something. Hey, <laughs> yeah, and you you all don't have to worry about it, but I, I'll take care of it, whatever. But we, we'll figure it out. Jeremiah. He has a question. He says, how do you guys feel about the design track? I'm seeing that it's a um, logical push after I get my CCMP route switch. What type of jobs are available to someone who um, who won't have a CCDE for years? Can I, uh, can I start with that? Um, sure. So I, first, I've, I've got my CCDA, so the Cisco Certified Design Associate. And the reason I wanted to take that was because I wanted to understand uh, designing networks a little bit more. Um, now working as a consultant for Cisco, it is so fundamental that you can understand um, the way that networks are designed. Because when you go and see customers, I think I've said it before, and I can't stress enough, every customer is different, no network is the same. So when you go and see a customer for, you know, maybe uh, you've got a new project and I don't know, let's say, for instance, they're doing an ACS to ICE migration. Um, the deployment that you've just done with a previous customer, even though it's the same, um, you know, the one in the same thing, the ACS to ICE migration, um, the network's going to be totally different. Um, so you really need to understand how to design and architect networks. And even from a consultant standpoint, especially within Cisco, we're not necessarily redesigning somebody's full network, but we, we need to be able to recommend best practices. We need to be able to say to the customer, okay, you know, you, we can see you've got it this way. Maybe that's because 10 years ago we did it like this, but you know, best practice now is, or this device now doesn't support this sort of method. So we need to now look at how we can change the design to meet the new recommendation. You know, so let's say for instance, uh, you know, load balances and, and uh, ice, you know, you need to understand that, um, you know, how can we load balance traffic to different um, policy service nodes in, in different data centers, you know, stuff like that. So it's not just about understanding the technology. Um, and this is really one thing that I'm trying to focus on now um, as well is the design aspect of, um, of, of networks, because I feel it's so important, especially if you're a consultant, as probably Erica and uh, Antonio um, could probably say as well. For me, for the design associate, I, I'm actually looking at that track. Um, I think it's pretty uh, attractive as far as like, uh, like you were saying, Kelvin, the, the uh, design. The thing that I've noticed is that from a job perspective or an opportunity perspective, once you learn how to design a, a network per se, you can go in and work as an architect, solutions architect, solutions integration architect, like what we have at Cisco. Uh, or you can go in as a technical lead and be able to look at, because designing is not only just from a, a technical perspective, it's also from the business aspect. So, you know, because a customer can come in 
and they want to, you know, let's say get a, a, a solution together and they've got in their mind how they want to do things. And, it, you know, it may, you know, be uh, excessive as far as, you know, uh, purchasing equipment uh, or, you know, if you need to uh, make recommendations on uh, whether or not they have uh, the the right type of equipment there, or do do, do they actually need to um, purchase any, any anything else? You as an uh, as an architect, or you know, from a design perspective, you need to be able to look at that and look at it from the technical aspect, but also from the business aspect. And I think that's more it is geared towards um, you know that I think that track will definitely help out the uh, CCDA. Once I get finished with the security track, um, then I was looking at probably doing that uh, the DE track. So I think it's going to be very beneficial. But the 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 doors are open once you get that uh, that knowledge, and it doesn't have to be in a you know certification perspective. Uh, you can definitely uh, get that from just the training, and then maybe looking to see if you could try to apply it within your 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 everyday organization right now. Yeah, just to just to jump back in there, um, you know, Cisco have also got validated designs online. Uh, Correct. You know, Correct. From you know covering um, certain features or uh, security features or data center features, whatever, to covering you know the old enterprise architecture. You know, so you can you know you can kind of go online, Cisco validated designs, and um, you you can start to look at all that. So even if you're not looking at taking the certification, you can study and you can see what Cisco recommends as a best practice. Um, and you know, kind of get your head around that um, if you're not looking to take the certification, but get the knowledge as well. Yeah, and you know, I couldn't agree more with uh, Erica and Kelvin. Um, but to echo what Erica had mentioned about the business, uh, I know that if you pursue the CCDE, it's not just a technical uh, exam. So if you think about that, um, that shows the blend now or the merger of or the removal of silos between the business units or the business minds, uh, the people in the C-suites, and then us at the technical uh, level. So point being two also, uh, no technology can do what it does optimally without a design, especially a good design. So there's nothing for you to lose. There's going to always be a need to have a good design, and there's always going to be a need for somebody to uh, do the operations and maintenance of said design. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I thank y'all for that. So I'm going to get one more question, and then I'm going to let y'all maybe pick a question from the chat. I don't want to keep you, hold y'all too much more today. I thank y'all for coming on the channel. My pleasure. Yes. Man, you already know I love it, man. Yeah, absolutely. And to finally get it out here with Erica, but y'all have no idea how excited <laughs> I am. I don't know, Erica is super dope, man. Like, she's really a superhero. I appreciate that. I do. You guys are my mentors, man. You guys, I, I, I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> hey, yo, I, iron sharpens iron. And Back. I really, one of the best things about, you know, me stepping out on YouTube is meeting people like y'all. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. I never thought that I would see so many and meet so many inspirational people. You know what I mean? And it's, it's just a great time to be in, on IT and just with y'all, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I'm going to get one more question from Rohan Williams. He says, hello, everyone. What are your thoughts on automation and the impact to on the networking world um, of the future? Thanks in advance. I probably will start with that one. So I think that automation is going to happen regardless. I think it's going to be, you will start to see kind of like a, and this is just my opinion. I, I've seen it now because I'm seeing a lot of companies go from the traditional core distribution access layer um, environment, which is traditional routing and switching to a more ACI uh, application centric or network centric environment. Um, with automation, you can, like in the ACI environment, uh, some of the sites that I've been on, as as large as let's say 100 leaves, 68 uh, uh, spines. So you're not going to sit there and, and uh, configure all that because you'd be up there for the next two months 
almost doing that if you, you know, it's just one or two individuals. So you can script your entire configuration and uh, put that out there within hours mm -hmm. versus days or weeks. So I think automation is going to happen regardless of if it, you know, if it's going to, you know, if you're going to be ready for it or not, I think it's just going to be inevitable. Now, the trick is, is it going to be network automation, you know, the SDN, ACI, VMware, NSX environment, right. or is it going to be the, the strictly um, environment where you're doing a lot of scripting from a Python programming uh, uh, effort? That's, you know, that's to be, uh, you know, that's going to be remain to be seen, but I think it's going to be there no matter what. And I think that if you're an engineer, regardless of if it's security engineer, network engineering, if you can really pick up scripting, uh, any forms of it, whether it's J JSON, XML, Python, I think it will be so much more beneficial for you because that way when it when the change comes, you can be able to adapt and be able to move forward. Um, but I, I really think scripting is going and, and automation is going to come up no matter what. Uh, but I think I think it's still going to be remain the same because I've seen companies move a lot of, especially in the government sector, where they move a lot of their uh, resources, applications to the cloud. And in order to get to that point, you have to have engineers available. Uh, and it's not only just from an engineer perspective, but it's also be able to communicate with the developers because that's how the market's shifting right now. Uh, so it, you're going to have to be able to kind of take it from the routing and switching world and be able to, to talk that language to a developer mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, decipher what they come back with, with their requirements. So I think it's going to happen regardless. So that, that's my opinion on that. You know, one of the things that, um, that our CEO, uh, Chuck Robbins said a couple of years ago live was that the, um, the network of the future is a hybrid. I mean, the network engineer of the future is a hybrid network engineer. Correct. Um, knows networking, but also knows automation scripting and uh, software development. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to change drastically from what it is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I mean, from my point of view, I, it's happening and it's already happening. I think there's still silos in certain companies in certain places. Um, if we take a step back and we have a look at, well, is it the companies that are using automation or is it the engineers that are using automation to, to make their lives easier? Uh, I think for me personally at the moment, I've been using um, automation uh, this past year to make my life easier, to make my deployments quicker um, where I can and you know it's not only because um i wanted to make my life easier i also wanted to learn uh, network automation so you know for me i had a real keen interest in ansible and um when i got offered uh, the project that i um, started to use ansible on um, you know i realized that uh, one of my senior uh, colleagues was actually using Ansible already, so I kind of looked at what he did. Um, and the great thing about scripting, is, as Eric was saying, you know, learn scripting, etc. The great thing about scripting and uh, moving forward is, you know, once it's created, it's created. It can be used. Uh, you can edit the variables, and it can be used for you know different networks. I could pass my script to, let's say, Eric, uh, Antonio. You two could create totally different variables and deploy it on your same systems, you know, and it'll be totally different. So you wouldn't necessarily need to know all the scripting back end because all the hard work's already being done. So I think moving forward in the future, the good thing to realize is that, you know, you might not even know it's beneficial to understand the scripting and, and get your head around that if you're, uh, you know, really uh, passionate about understanding how that works. Um, it's important to realize that there's going to be, you know, we've got something called GitHub. You know, there's a lot of people out there creating scripts with, you know, with different languages and publishing them for free where you can download them, edit them and do what you want. And this is the same thing my colleague did. He already had um, Ansible files. It deployed um, using these scripts within free data centers. I took those. I learned how everything was put together with Ansible, Python, etc. And then I used it then to deploy what I needed to do on the next three data centers. 
you know so on i think it were over 30 firewalls you know it made my life a lot easier it took me you know deploying um configurations for uh, firepower and asa code you know there's a lot of configuration in there for over 30 devices and it took me three days three days and that's with that's with checking and changing configuration as well um you know so it's definitely happening it's going to happen it makes our life easier um it's just for me at the moment i'm not really um seeing from a company perspective them kind of utilizing that apart from apis etc um, i'm seeing it more from uh, an engineer perspective of myself uh, where i can use this technology to make my life easier man true story uh, there's two things that i'm gonna say before um, I let y'all take over. There's a free course that I found on um, YouTube. Kevin puts out a lot of great information, but Greg Mueller has a network automation course, and is I'm gonna put it in the chat. It's pretty dope for anybody that's trying to learn Python. It's it's a really good free playlist. It's about ten videos, not too long, and it should help you get started. Now, you mentioned Chuck Robbins. I don't know if you all know who John Chambers is. He's in Cisco. <laughs> He used to be our CEO yeah. and used yep. to be the uh, chairman of our board. Okay, so he just put out a book. It's called Connecting the Dots. And I saw some of the stuff that he did, and he's talking about leadership and how he took Cisco from where it was in the 90s to basically where it is today. And I thought, that's a book I think I'm going to check that check out. So I, I don't know. It's a great uh, um, book on leadership from some of the stuff that was posted. And I just didn't really, I think on the next live stream, I would really like to talk about leadership. That's really right. what I'm kind of getting to and how to be the example in your organization. Mm -hmm. That's going to okay. be a great conversation. I think so too. Definitely. Now, who, who, so I'm going to let you all close it out. I don't know who wants to go first. If y'all got a question y'all want to answer or if y'all just want to share some information to the audience. Well, there was a question that Dorian asked uh, that I'd like to take a shot at. And okay. William Smith post one question if willing to ask uh, to share the hardest moment or life event that almost detoured your learning and how you shook back. Dorian, that's a great question because like we had said earlier with uh, you're going to hit a, a, a wall at some point, life happens. For me, uh, I won't go into more detail than I've already gone into. Uh, I was working a lot of hours, uh, going through a divorce. Uh, having some other hardships and trying to find balance as a single father uh, with two girls that are still in school and needing attention, guidance, and all of that good stuff. And uh, the days that I was down uh, and couldn't study uh, mentally or emotionally build myself up to do it, I just focused on uh, making it through that day. Okay, baby. I just... Uh, oh, who? Thank you, baby. Uh, sorry about that. Um, that's one of the babies coming home now. <laughs> but uh, when those times came, man, I had to make a a commitment to focusing on myself and saying that if I'm broke down, I can't help anybody else. Uh, I had to rely on my network of people that I trusted with the information of what I was dealing with when I was at that lowest point. And I had to rely on my faith and my spiritual uh, makeup that said that, you know, I have the power to change anything and that, you know, what's going on today may be, you know, because it's a mistake that I made, let me correct that, or it may be going on because there's a lesson I need to learn. So ultimately, Dorian, if you get to a place where it's your lowest and your darkest place in life, uh, don't give up, All right. don't give in, take some time, take a break, uh, trust somebody to help uh, help you carry that load. Trust somebody to help at least shoulder that burden of the information of what you're dealing with. Don't keep holding it in. And uh, as quick and as healthily as you can, get back on the uh, get back on the horse. Man. That's right. Hey, uh, I don't know if y'all want to go, but Tony, I'm glad you made it through that, man. You, I appreciate you're, that. You're a strong brother, and I appreciate you. you you're Thank a brother you. to me, man. Much love. Yeah. Same here, man. I love you. Yeah, love you too, man. So, 
in 2013. That was <laughs> it's crazy, but so in 2013, I was that was like my sixth year on the help desk, and that's when I knew I had to make a change because my company was closing and it was just like I my wife's pregnant, about to have my son, which would be my third child. And to make matters worse, I got a DUI. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so I can't drive. My wife's pregnant. You know, I work about 30 hours away from where I live. My job is closing. I need to go to interviews and I need to find a job and explain to them that I just got a DUI. Yeah. <laughs> that was the lowest point in my adult life. Yeah. The the lowest point because I didn't really know how to handle that. And you know, and I was embarrassed to get in a DUI for first of all, because I've never had one. But it was a wake up call to let me know, look, it's time to grow up, it's time to be more responsible. You can put yourself at risk, you can put someone else at risk, and you are putting someone at risk drinking and driving. You should never do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I made it to where I am today, but that was just a really dark time in my life. You know, I think get it through that, bro. Yeah. yeah thanks, man. Yeah. But definitely. I, I mean, what we're going to say is that as long as people adapt and grow from what they've been through, you know, it's that's what it's about. You know, it's not about having these having these issues or running into issues and not doing anything about them. You know, you two have, have come through it, you know, and I respect that. And, you know, you've done something about it and now look at where you are now. And to look back, you know, you, you, you almost smile because you realize the hardship that you've been through. You know, I've been there myself. You know, I've been there and, you know, I've been in the self-help section and, you know, I'm, I'm still in the self-help section on a, on a daily basis, you know, trying to um, try to, to reminisce and understand uh, and appreciate where I've come from um, and how I got to where I am today. And, you know, I think it's really important to realize that um everyone goes through bad times you know uh, mm -hmm. times might be different but everybody goes through bad times it's how you come out from the from from that you know and i bet you guys now look back and think wow you know look at look at where i am now you know i do i do too you know from what let's say five five years ago you know to what my life is now and to what i'm doing now um yeah it's i'm i'm happy yeah i'm happy i'm doing what i want to do and for people that knew me 10 years ago to 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 and if they see me now they'll be like kelvin you're, you're someone else you're totally different <laughs> you know i made that step to kind of improve my life not only for myself but for my daughter as well and because you know i wanted to do something with my life you know and that, that's what it's about it's all about improving Man, right. I, I'm so glad that you guys, you know, didn't give up because that's the main thing. Um, let me say this much. One thing that Mr. Antonio McCarver puts on his little Instagram uh, about protecting your peace. <laughs> that's so bad. And I'm not going to I have to paraphrase it because I can't get I, I don't want to go and look it up. But he puts out some very golden uh, golden nuggets of wisdom. And I guess it's, you know, as he progresses on in life. You know he understands you know to give you know to give some some knowledge on what he's you know uh, gone through and then put that out there but i i'm glad that you guys were able to get some help i you know, everybody's going through some something that they has been at their lowest point and you know what do you do to you know to resolve that or how do you get back up you know we've I, i've gone through that myself mm -hmm. um but i will say this much it's okay to protect your peace. It's okay, you know, if you have a, a low moment. The the thing is don't quit. You know, don't don't give up, don't get discouraged. Yeah. Sometimes people turn to faith. Sometimes people, you know, turn to their families. But the, the trick is just don't give up. Um if you had to see me when I first came out of college to now, 
completely different. You would you would say, wow, you know, <laughs> that's Miss Bradley versus Miss Cooper, you know. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's a little, you know, so everybody has been at that point. So I'm I'm really glad. I respect everybody's journey and, and you know, share your journey because other people can learn from that. You're not in this boat by yourself. So absolutely. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not, that's it. you know, that's yeah. It. But I, I'll say this much, Mr. Mr. McCarver, when he says protect your peace, mm -mm. that that's like a golden nugget right there. Protect your inner peace. So and, and always talk to somebody. I think talking to somebody is, is important. Don't just keep it bottled up and think that you can handle it yourself. Because as big as the person you think you are, you always need somebody to talk to. You know, for the past, I mean, I, I'm to, to, if you know anybody wants to talk about you know struggle and, and working through it, you know I'm currently going through divorce as, as it speaks. You know I moved, um, you know to my own place um, while doing that, and I've still got to manage you know having my daughter and working and traveling around the world at the same time. And, you know it's it's not easy, but you know all you've got to do is talk to somebody and know that it's going to be okay. And also look at the things that you've been through and know that you can also get through whatever you're going through at present you know there's always a light at the end of the tunnel that's that's Thanks. a fact uh, it's always a light at the end of the tunnel and just remember that you know uh life isn't perfect man no matter what we do it, it isn't perfect it isn't perfect erica you uh is 100 percent correct <laughs> I, I do post a lot about protecting your peace and i'm <clears throat> For you, Erica, because uh, we had a conversation recently where <laughs> I didn't protect my peace, and you reminded me of something that I said, and I, I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> That's really people. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he constantly telling me that, like, <laughs> uh, talk, oh, well, let me know quick, like, hey, Juan, you need to, um, yeah, you need to focus on your peace, and you know, you what know I mean? what? sorry to cut you off, but Kelvin just did something that, uh. I think a lot of us fail to do, and this is a great lesson. He took two days off from work. Mm -hmm. I did. And I, I was chatting with him and he was like, you know, uh, I asked him for something. He's like, I, I get that when I get back to my computer, I'm not even around my computer right now. And I was telling Dewan that I think I'm going to take a couple of days off and go do something that I'm, that I rarely do. And that's take care of me, you know, mm -hmm. as a father, especially a single father, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always taking care of other humans and then being a leader in my organization. I'm always taking care of a customer and I rarely ever take care of me. And, you know, you, you that can contribute to you getting to your lowest place in life because you can have a breakdown or whatever. So right. in the midst of all of this, make sure you take care of you. Make sure you do something for you. You mm -hmm. have to. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sorry to cut you off, Dewan. Oh, man, no, you good, bro. You good. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say that, see, I, I working for Cisco, when I when I was working outside of Cisco, you know, you'd have your 40 hours, maybe work, you know, maybe an extra 10, 50 hours. But when you come over to Cisco, it was like you get the entire house thrown at you. It's like, OK, <laughs> uh, so then you wind up, you know, putting in a lot of extra hours. And that's a great point. Take your time, take your, you know, if you got to take a, 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 you know, day or two, take a step back, re, you know, regroup, re-energize, you know, find a passion. My passion is golfing. I didn't think I was going to ever like golfing, but I love golfing. I don't ask me about how to play it. I just go out to the driving range. I go to top golf. I don't care about how to, if I'm going to make the LPGA tour, I don't care. But it's like, if I get out there and hit a couple balls a couple times a week, Hey, I, life is golden at that point, but you have to have something to kind of get that, you know, that break, that, that stress break. So that's it. I mean, this. So, for instance, the, we're at the end of this week now, but from Monday to Wednesday, you know, I've been pretty much working way beyond what I should be working. You know, I've been working most nights until midnight just to try and meet deadlines and. You know, it got to, you know, I've got a lot of personal stuff going on in my life as well. And, you know, I was speaking to Antonio on, I think it was Thursday or Friday. And I said, man, I've took two days off. I've took the Thursday and the Friday off because, you know, I just need some time. I need, you know, some me time. And, you know, it helped. Even though it were two days, you know, I got time to spend that little extra bit of time with my little girl. You know, for those that follow me on Instagram, you see that we're dancing the night away a few days ago. <laughs> 
you know, and as little as that might seem, you know, that's a big deal for me because I don't really get to do that. You know, I'm constantly stuck at my computer, um, you know, either studying or working. So it's nice just to switch off. You know, yes, I am studying for my CCIE security, but I need time away from all that. You know, I need my time. Real, real quick, uh, Erica said that uh, she she started focusing on a passion that she has, and hers is golf. Dewan and Kelvin, what are some of your outside interests that you guys turn to when you need that time to get away from doing what we do? I think for me, it's um, the gym. So I like going to the gym. I like staying fit uh, and healthy. So one of my getaways, especially when I was um, – and I think I found this when I was joining the military um, back in the days was running. I had a real passion for running. And, you know, as I say, back in the day, um, you know, I wasn't really in a place where I wanted to be. And I found that running was one of my getaways, one of my escapes. Um, and I could just run and forget about everything. And I just, you know, for me, that was, that was perfect. And I'm kind of finding that again today, you know, I'm finding that, for me to get away from the computer screens, you know, go out and run or go to the gym and lift some weights, get, you know, push that pressure out of you. You know, for me, that is, it's a big thing. That, that's what's up. For me, it's a couple things, man. Uh, I, lo I love music, hip hop, it don't matter what it is. Just going in a place where it's quiet to myself and catching up on the, the latest music is, is one. Two would be going to an art gallery where it's just me and I can just, soak up you know some van gogh or just just whatever is there some artists i've never even heard of you know by myself going to um a, a location a venue where nobody knows me and i can just be amongst people and just listen to conversation or have a conversation with a complete stranger that doesn't know me doesn't mean nothing from me and i don't need nothing from them i just like hi how you doing so you know, what, how about how about them Cavs or how about them Browns? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just yeah. escaping everything that's going on in my life. Yeah. Just to up. jump back in, I think, like, um, you spoke about music. So jazz is one of my things. I, I really like soulful jazz, so that's kind of one of my escapes. And, um, you know, I touched on it earlier as well, um, self-help. You know, I like to I follow, um, for those that are aware, the law of attraction. Um, uh, an author called Napoleon Hill. Um, oh, so yeah. he, did, uh, he did studies uh, many years ago now based on the most successful people uh, in the US, I believe, at the time. And they followed their, um, how they made their, their millions um, over a 25-year period. Um, so I like, to, I like to follow things like that. Um, so, you know, getting away with reading uh, more self-help books and just kind of appreciating life as a whole. Yeah, think and grow rich. Yeah, think and grow rich, and yeah, the sign getting rich by one D one. So I don't know if you've uh, seen that one as well. What time is that? Cool. Well, um, did anybody want to close it out before we up out of here? Well, you know, real quick, my I need to do a giveaway. My, uh, I'm with a giveaway, right. but to piggyback on, not to piggyback on yours, but we do have the same interest. Mine is music. Nice. <laughs> As you can see, this is all about the breaks. I'm more about making the music. So I'll come in here to the half of my uh, lab that's set up as my studio, and I'll try to make me some music. You and got turntables? Of course. Oh, it is, boy. It is the 12s. I mean, I would show y'all what I'm what I'm working with. Hey, we about to have studio wars. We about to have oh, studio no, wars. I, I don't think you're prepared for that. I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, don't, you don't want to flex like that. <laughs> Y'all so silly. <laughs> Y'all uh, so that's, silly. That's, that's something I'm going to have to let you win today. But next <laughs> week, if we do it again, I'm going to be loaded. <laughs> hey, so I've got, I got an MPC or, or a machine. You know, we can go to the play. You know, it, it's, it's whatever. So are you a DJ or just nah, a, nah, nah, a mixologist? Just... Okay. Okay. See, I, I, I love house music, so... You from Chicago? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, if you got some house music in there, you want to throw that together? Hey, well, you know, send me the, send me the CD. I'll listen to it. <laughs> you know, uh, Detroit and Chicago are the same when it comes to the music scene. So, yeah, yeah, they that's true. That house, they both booming in that house. It's just different. You know, they're just different. 
We, we, got, we got our own little dance where they call it the JIT. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I just want to answer this question that Wilton's posted. So, my passion is security, but money is very tight. So, I'm teaching myself. And anyway. So, I just want to say, you know, don't let money stop you from uh, doing what you need to do. Um, there's much material out there online, free material. Um, if you're passionate about security, you can use websites such as Cybery, uh, which have a lot of free um, security. Well, it is a security-related website. Um, so you could use that to learn what you need to learn. You don't necessarily have to go out there and get certifications or pay for certifications. You know, if you can show that you've got that knowledge um, and get your foot into the door without that certification, once you get into the company, then that company could, you know, more than likely provide um, you the, the the financial resources to actually get that certification. Um, so don't let money stop you from going out there and achieving uh, what you need to achieve because the IT industry is, is a massive industry and you don't need money to get started. I, that's, that's, that's correct. I mean, the, the one thing you have to, I always say in my mindset always has been invest in yourself. So I wouldn't use that as a, um, a barrier to kind of, you know, not be able to, you know, get into security. I mean, uh, Kelvin gave some great examples. So, uh, but definitely invest in yourself is, um, you know, you, you are your greatest asset. So definitely invest in yourself. Yeah. yeah. And a mum of two, so I mean, yo, even even more of a motive to go and get that, you know. We need more women in technology. Look at what Erica's doing. I appreciate that. Thank you. And you're right, ladies. Let's get in the game. Let's let's do this because uh, I think there's what sixty thousand CCIEs. There's less than a thousand uh, female CCIEs, I believe. So out of sixty thousand within the entire world, there's less than maybe a thousand. So ladies, let's get in the game. Yes. It's less, that number uh, goes down dramatically with uh, ladies that have more than one CCIE. So, you know, yes, you guys are needed. Uh, you guys are more than capable and, you know, just get out. And there's some amazing women out here doing it. Matter of fact, find you some, uh, some that are doing it that inspire you and uh, follow them, follow their journey, and, you know, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you, if you are a woman in the chat and you're in information technology, raise your hand or put your Twitter or something so all the women can network this in the chat. I would yeah. love to see that right now. Well, um, Erica also got Twitter as well, so you can reach out to Erica. On, yeah, on. yep. And I'm going to put her information in the description because Erica, LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram, all that stuff, she gets it in. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. I, I thank you. No doubt. But it's a, a, hey, sorry, Erica. I tried to add you on LinkedIn, but it won't let me add add you without adding your email address. I want to shy for using your Cisco or not. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um I will send you that. But yeah, i yeah, I I, I changed stuff a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Move, move right along. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but, but absolutely. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm more on Twitter than anything else. You'll find my, I, I talk about anything related to SDN, route switch, uh, you know, just try to give back to the community. But uh, like I was saying, uh, ladies, let's get in the game uh, and, and definitely, you know, try to give back as best as you can uh, because just as you're getting, a, you know, successful, you can always reach back and kind of help everybody else out. Uh, because when I was coming around, there was very few people in the industry that I could, you know, kind of look at as, as a mentor or someone that kind of like, oh, yeah, that's who I aspire to be. So, uh, ladies, let's get in the game because uh, we can, you know, definitely contribute to this. So, I, you know. Yes. I agree. I want to say something real quick. Kelvin was talking about was you were talking about um, not letting money hold you back. One of my mentors told me this a long time ago. He was like, whatever your dream is, there's money baked in it. Mm -hmm. so you can't focus on the money. Focus on the dream because the money always comes along with the dream. 
Mm. One of the things that I learned uh, with the law of attraction is that, you know, too many people focus on how they're going to get what they want. Right. You, know, you need to forget about that. Don't worry about how you're going to get what you want. Just focus on what you want and in time it will come because you'll guide yourself into what you want and you'll do what you need to do to get that. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to put everybody's information in the chat. Erica, you want to close it out? Yeah, we need to do, hold on. Hold on, we need to do this giveaway. <laughs> I don't want to leave without doing some type of giveaway. I got like $25 today on these super chats. So I don't know if y'all want to name something, a book or something that you want me to give away. And then let's, I put, guess, let's put it to the community. What would, what, what, the, what would they want? What is there a book that you guys would like? And it doesn't have to be technical. It could be non-technical. It could be leadership management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, if there's a book, or maybe even like a Udemy training course or something that you, something you've been wanting. That'd what be about that book from John Chambers? Um, which yeah. is connecting the dots. I think the, I, I didn't even know that. So I, I'm going to get that. Uh, cause I think that's a great book. Cause, um, if you're not familiar with, uh, John Chambers and where he took Cisco initially, when they first started to right now, I mean, cause he just retired. What was it, Antonio, about what, two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago from where it first started, meaning all of the dot-com bursts, the implosion for the dot-com, they were able to withstand that to where they're at two years ago. Phenomenal, phenomenal story. I think his his story is, is, is great. So I, I would, I'm gonna get that book, so. Yeah, definitely. yeah, I'm with Erica. Either that book or that was a real dope idea about the Udemy training. So mm -hmm. it's, it's whatever. In the meantime, while the community is deciding, Kelvin, Dewan, and Erica, let's tell the world what are what would be your number one book that you've read for life or technology. So I'm gonna get you it. Give me a second. I'm gonna show you. Yeah, let me get mine. Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, I'm gonna get mine too, bro. Hold hey, on. Man, I'll get mine then. <laughs> oh, flex, flex Olympics. All right, yo, it looked like Lab Every Day shirts is what folks want. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I, let me do this. Let me see. Yo, Network Bruh, I got you on the Lab Every Day shirt. I'm gonna let. Let's see. No, oh, we'll let's wait on the. We'll wait on the Antonio to come back. Yeah. So, Network Bruh, I'm gonna give a Lab Every Day shirt. Hit me on Twitter, Network Bruh. All right, sorry about that. I have a huge <laughs> library, so I had to move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> I've got two. So one that I spoke about earlier, which I'm sure some of you are feeling, familiar with. So the Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, there you go. So this, <laughs> that's <laughs> one of my two books. So it's saying something. And that, you know, for me, um, it's not a technical book for those that don't know about it. It's more of a um, personal uh, self-help book sort of thing. Um, and this has really helped me look at life differently. Um, and the last one that I've got, which I'm halfway through, is Psycho-Cybernetics. I don't know if you've, you've heard about that, and that's more about the subconscious mind. So again, it's nothing even related to technical. Um, it's, it's more self-help because you know, these books, for me, help me uh, look at life differently. And um, you know, I truly believe it helps me become and be a better person in, in general. So these books help me. The mine would be emotional intelligence 2.0. Yeah. And basically this book is referencing uh how you function within a business. Because a lot of times people get wrapped up in this emotional um response, remote emotional uh interaction. And sometimes it's just about how to kind of self-help to you know how to, you know, how you should. I wouldn't say how you should respond like a, in a robotic, but just kind of like help you with uh, dealing with um, responses, dealing with uh, communication, try to understand 
seek to understand and see what, what people are talking about. So it just helped me out a lot. And then the other one is this one right here. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People yeah, that's by uh, that's Stephen Covey. Yeah. yeah, so those are my two. Stephen Covey, that book is dope. Yeah, I do agree with that. That's a book everybody should read. Yep. Along, yeah. Uh, my, one of mine is like Kelvin's, uh, Think and Grow Rich. That too. Uh, I, I have a couple of different versions. I have Think and Grow Rich and then Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> might have to check that mm -hmm. one out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Black Choice by Dennis Kimbrough. And, you know, it's uh, the same principles, but, you know, some some others, you mm -hmm. know. And then uh, The Carpenter by um, John Gordon. Uh, the Carpenter is about uh, really helping you to develop some uh, some strategies for looking at yourself, uh, working with people, and being a leader. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For, yo, for me, I just kept it simple. I got one book. I love Richest, that book, "Richest Man in Babylon." Um, learning biblical principles with money and how to actually manage your money is very important because sometimes it doesn't matter how much money you have and how much money you make. If you're broke mentally, you always gonna yeah. be broke. We'll always be broke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're gonna have to put them books in the description because I think I might have to make a purchase. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest uh, is one of the greatest ones out there. Mm. Say, say that again. The richest man in Babylon. That's one of the greatest ones that's out there. Yeah. You know what? I get it. How about I get this away too? So I don't know. Y'all want to pick somebody? Okay. Next person to say um, live every day. Hashtag live every day. I'm gonna send this book too. Hello. Just too and cold. is there another book y'all want to give away? Let me see. So somebody that said about emotional intelligence 2.0. And who's that? And I uh let's see. Says one one four. Who was it? I forgot the gentleman. Uh Dorian Smith says, uh was it him? Yeah, I forgot yep. the first book. Yep. yep, yep. Dorian Smith. Yep. Wait a minute. So Dorian Smith gets the emotional intelligence book, or because Lab Every Day, I got Phase One One Four for the. Yeah, I got Phase One One Four, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right, so this is what we'll do. I'm gonna give this book away twice, <laughs> so because <laughs> Dorian Smith asked a great question. So Dorian Smith, I'm gonna send you the richest man in Babylon and Phase One One Four. If both of y'all can hit me on Twitter, along with Network Bro, I'm gonna give a Lab Every Day shirt and. Yeah. Hey, anything else y'all y'all want to do before we get up out of here? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and staying with us. Um, you know, listening to what we've what we've got to say. I hope it's been useful um, for this as always. Um, and yeah, we're going to keep on hopefully bringing you guys the dropping the gems and um, you know, hopefully helping you along your way. Yep, I, I agree. And real quick, I just want to point out something to the community. Every day we're on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and we're talking about lab every day, lab every day. But if you look at the four of us, what we, what you guys just saw was that all four of us have a personal library of books that do not have anything to do with technology. That's right. true. With building yourself. So build your library. Build your personal library. It don't have to be physicals like we have. We're old school. We, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it could be audio books. It could be eBooks. But build that library. But also read it, digest it, take notes, and then make it applicable. On my desk right now, I don't have just these three. I have much more because all of them matter. Mm -hmm. Build your That's library. Right. Yeah. Right. Along with these audio books, I got a ton of audio books, but. Hey, hey, um, Erica, I didn't want to, you know, stop nobody from getting a blessing. So if you find that person who wanted that emotional intelligence book. Uh, it was it was Dorian. It, it was Dorian. He had asked about uh, the first book that I put up there. Dorian OK. Said. Hey, so Dorian, when you hit me on Twitter, let me know which book you would like, either the richest man in Babylon or the emotional intelligence. And maybe yeah. I'll just send you both. Yeah, because yeah. I've got the. Seven Habits of Highly, highly Effective People, and then the Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, hey, I think Antonio McCarver, Erica Cooper, Kelvin Charles, 
for coming on the channel. You all are an inspiration, not only in IT, but in life. I thank y'all for taking this hour and 40 minutes, 41 minutes, you know, of your Sunday to share with the Lab Everyday community and those in the chat. One day for me now. Yeah, my, my pleasure. I'm, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. So um, I, I look forward to the next time. I think it's a great channel. Keep up the great work. And um, I'm definitely, I'm excited about it. Uh, this, I wish I had had this format, this community when I was first starting out. This is so, so much a, a inspiration for everybody. So I'm really hoping that everybody gets something positive out of it. I, I couldn't agree more. Yo, the next time we're going to be on Kelvin's channel <laughs> on Kelvin's time because I'm not the only one on this platform and Kelvin puts out a lot of great content and information. So we're going to be on his platform next time. So, well, as long as we on a decent time zone, because you know, he is six hours ahead right. of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that'd be great. Just, you know, let us know and I'll be there to support you. So, yeah. Or even you know, Antonio's or yourself, Eric, because when you guys get your channel set up, you know, boom, on that. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta get this CCIE uh, security done. Then I'll, I'll look at some blogging and some channels. So I'll probably join yours or Dewan's yeah. and <laughs> kind of piggyback on that <laughs> versus trying to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> That's facts. She just dropped the gym right there. If y'all caught that. She got her priorities in order for herself first before she helps somebody. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm working on myself. So shout out to Erica for taking the right approach to life. <laughs> I, appreciate <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. But we up out of here. I'm going to leave all their contact information in the chat. Um, so be well in the description of this video. We thank y'all for tuning in. We'll holler at y'all later. 100. All right. Peace, fam. Peace. Have a good one. Take care.